In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw an Elden Ring style world map, and it might be easier than you think. Before we jump into making the map, I want to tell you about a wonderful charity bundle that is available right now if you're watching this video soon after its release on itch.io. I'll have a link down in the description. It is the Trans Rights in Texas bundle. It's got tons of tabletop role-playing game books available, like hundreds of them for a really low price for a really low price, all for a great cause. Some of my favorite books in there are Wander Home, Into the Weird and Wild that I reviewed on this channel. There's Loot the Plutes is a good one to check out and Sword Quest. There's tons of others, but I just wanted to let you know that this is going on. It's a good cause, go check it out. First link down in the description. So. I have been playing a lot of Elden Ring. I'm loving it. I'm exploring all over the place. I'm looking at this beautiful world map inside the game that you can fast travel all around. And it's huge and detailed. But as I was looking at it, I kind of realized that none of the actual drawing on the map is like that crazy or complicated. And I think if we take a closer look, we'll realize that even if you don't have any drawing ability, you can draw an Elden Ring style world map. So what kind of tools do you need to make this kind of map? Well, I'm just using a piece of paper, some Faber-Castell pit artist pens, or like Micron pens. I will also be coloring this map with a, just a cheap set of watercolors, but just like the pens and paper, you don't really need anything fancy. Anything you wanna color this map with will work just fine. So let's start off by taking a look at the Elden Ring map, and I'm just showing the limb grave area, the, the first area, and I apologize that there's a lot of icons and stuff as I've explored all over this area and have unlocked a decent amount. It sort of gets in the way of the actual map stuff that we're gonna be looking at, but anyway, basically all we're doing is looking at the Elden Ring map, picking out all of the pieces and parts, the individual elements that make up the map, and we're gonna deconstruct those elements, figure out how to draw them, then we can add them all back together in our own map, and it's gonna look awesome. So just like all of my other map drawing videos, I start with a key, and this is no different here. So on a scrap sheet of paper, I'm going to figure out how to draw the castle, and the ruins, the roads, and the forest, and the sort of cliffs and elevation elements, and of course all of the water too, so the coastline and the lake areas. So as we're drawing each of these elements, you'll realize that there's no real fancy drawing going on here. It's, it's all pretty simple stuff. The castles are just circles with lines making walls. So really don't get discouraged if it takes you a few tries to figure out how to draw each of the elements. The reason that we're starting with this step is so you can play around, experiment a little bit, and get the hang of drawing these pieces and parts before combining them into a final map. Now looking at the actual map of Limgrave, I get the sense that whoever the artist is that drew this map actually like traced over some sort of overhead view of the game world because it seems like a kind of one-to-one -one comparison as you're moving through the actual game. So basically we're doing the exact same thing that the artist that drew this Elden Ring map did by tracing the geometry of the world. We are just copying their drawings and figuring out how they rendered things the same way that they copied the world. Does that make sense? The only difference is we're going to be able to take all of these elements and totally rework them into our own map. So that's pretty cool. Okay, anyway, the roads are made up of negative space with the edges made up of these sort of uh, like perpendicular hatch marks. So if you can draw just a bunch of little lines, you can easily draw Elden Ring style roads. The trees are super simple. They're just bumpy shapes with some little texture lines filled in the middle. And then just two little lines for the trunk. 
of the tree. Now, the cliffs are basically the same kind of thing as the roads. Just lots of little hatch marks to kind of show the elevation of an area. You know, where there's big cliffs where if you run over the edge, your, your character will die. Those have kind of a hard edge. And then there's hatching that goes down and then another layer of hatching to make it like extra dark. This kind of just emphasizes the steepness and height of the cliff on a two-dimensional drawing in areas that aren't quite as dangerous cliffs you know like lower drop-offs uh, just have less aggressive hatching you know not doubled up hatching moving on to the coastline it has a nice thick border and then another thinner outline and then another second thinner outline so all i'm doing is using my size medium my my thickest pin to make the the border between water and land and then using my size f my fine pin to make the second line and then my size s for small pin to make the third line it sort of just gives the feeling of the water gradually getting deeper but it's only drawing three lines so that's cool now there's also these horizontal hatching lines i think these are here really to like break up the map and show that there is a big difference between the water and the land and i'm making these lines by taking my medium sized pen pushing down kind of hard against the coastline and then pulling them straight down and loosening up to make a sort of tapered horizontal hatch mark this step really shows why using a scrap piece of paper you can figure this sort of stuff out and be really confident on how your map is going to look before jumping into the final drawing speaking of the final drawing now that we have all of our elements figured out we can jump onto a new clean sheet of paper and start figuring out what kind of map we're gonna draw. Now I'm just making up my map off the top of my head. I'm trying to use all of the elements that are from the Limgrave area of the Elden Ring map, but my map is just a unique made up place. And I'm starting out by just very lightly planning stuff out with pencil, just to sort of get an idea of where all the elements are gonna go. I'm not drawing every little detail in with the pencil, but for areas like the castle and some of the ruins, I am sketching in those places just to be extra confident of how things are going to look before I jump into finalizing the drawing in ink. So you can add as few or as many details if you want. If you want to completely draw out the map in pencil first, go for it. Whatever feels most natural, that's what you should do. Now that I have my totally made up map figured out, it's time for the fun part, it's time to start inking. Like all of my other maps, I always start with the, the thick outline of the island or the continent, whatever you want to call it. You know, the part that separates the land and the water. I'm not sure why I always start with this, but it's just, it's just how I do it. So that's what I'm starting with. <laughs> After that's done, honestly, it's, it's time to just go nuts and start filling in details. I'm going to start with the castle, just get that out of the way. And then I'll just jump around all over the map and draw whatever I feel like in the moment. Now the Elden Ring map is jam packed with little details everywhere. There's all these kind of arbitrary lines everywhere that I think indicate changes in elevation. So I'm just kind of throwing them in there however it seems like it should look. You know, I have in my head where the higher up areas are on the map. So I'm making all of these extra lines kind of look like the borders of hills and elevation changes. Sometimes the lines are solid, sometimes they're dashed, Sometimes they're just the little hatch marks. Sometimes they're a solid line with the hatch marks added to it. The great thing about this map is that there's so much detail and it's very hand-drawn looking that it's kind of hard to mess this stuff up. So just go crazy adding in all these little marks and lines everywhere and it'll turn out looking good. Okay, quick interruption while we're time lapse in here. I just want to say if you would like to support the channel and also get monthly tabletop role-playing game adventure zines you know they're one two three sessions worth of adventure all crammed into a nicely illustrated saddle stitched book sent directly to your mailbox or inbox i've sort of lost my train of 
thought here on this uh, rambling run-on sentence, but if you're interested in that, check out my Patreon. It's linked down in the description. I'm really proud of all the work that I do there every month, and I'm just so appreciative of all my patrons for supporting me to make these videos and giving me the time to create these crazy monthly tabletop role-playing game adventures. So yeah, check out the Patreon link down in the description. So I'm gonna be honest with you, all of this drawing does take a while just because there's lots and lots of little lines to make. But just like I've said over and over again, no part of this map is super hard to draw. And what makes it cool is once you fill up the page with all of these little details, it creates a map that is intricate and complex and super fun to look at and study. It just makes a cool drawing, even though none of the actual drawing is that hard. Does that make sense? And also, I think it's cool to just zone out and draw sometimes. Just remember to refer back to the key or take a look at the Elden Ring map. If you need some sort of reference and you won't get stuck, you can just enter Zen mode and draw your heart away. So now that I'm all done with the line art, I will admit the map looks kind of crazy. There's a lot of detail going on. It's kind of hard to focus on what's happening in the drawing. And really it's because the Elden Ring map makes excellent use of color. The color really helps to distinguish one area from the next. You can also clearly see the roads because they're lighter than everything else. The same way that the cliffs and the changes in elevation are darker than everything else. So I think it's really important that we color this map. So I'm going to be using this cheap set of watercolors, but really you can use whatever kind of tool you want. Markers, crayons, colored pencils would be excellent for this. Or if you want to color digitally too, scan in your drawing, color it on your computer, your iPad. It's pretty clear that the actual Elden Ring map was colored digitally. So if you really want to replicate the style of it, you know, you can give that a shot. But yeah, I'm going to be using watercolor. So I'm taping down my sheet of paper and I'll be honest with you, I, I have not used watercolors that much. I don't really know what I'm doing. I do know that you're supposed to start light and then slowly build up the saturation, make the colors brighter and or darker even. But of course I am used to just picking colors on a computer, so mixing colors is a, a little tricky for me. I'm sure if you're familiar with my illustration style and you'll also notice it as this time lapse progresses, that my tendency is to make brighter, more saturated colors than the Elden Ring map, but you know, that's fine. Just you do, do your thing. I don't know how to make these gray, muddy colors look good like the Elden Ring map. There's gonna be some greens and blues in this thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I got to get used to is being patient and letting this stuff dry. So, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do it layer by layer, building up the color. I started with the real light green and then adding more intense colors on top. Same with all the shadows and everything. But you know, the real cool thing about using watercolor is that you can be kind of messy with it and it still looks really cool. The texture of watercolor is is really nice. And I actually think that the Elden Ring map, even though I'm 99% sure that it was done digitally, is trying to mimic the watercolor feel with like texture overlays and stuff like that, or maybe some fancy watercolor brushes in Photoshop or whatever program they're using. And you know, sometimes it's nice to get off the computer and actually do this stuff for real. It's rewarding is what it is. So I just wanna say one more time, that even though this map style is more complicated, it takes a little bit longer to draw and color. If you're willing to put in the time, you don't need to have any crazy drawing abilities to make an awesome looking drawing like the Elden Ring map. And honestly, this whole process could be applied to recreating any other style of map. You know, so if there's some other video game that has a cool world map and you wanna use that to create your own world for your D&D campaign or your own video game or whatever. Use the steps of breaking down the individual elements, figuring out how to draw each individual thing. It's much easier to tackle one thing at a time 
And then once you got it all figured out, then you can combine everything back together into this big detailed drawing. And if you're willing to put the time in, you're gonna have an awesome looking, super detailed, incredible map. Yes. So what do you think of the final map? Does it look like this could be a, a section of the Elden Ring map? Or maybe it's a little too bright and it, it maybe it looks a little more like a, a Hyrule map. Like a Legend of Zelda map. That's kind of cool. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. And also, if you were inspired by this video and you draw your own map, please hit me up on social media, Instagram or Twitter. I love seeing what you all make. It keeps me inspired and full of my own creative energy to make more videos like this. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!